Well, good evening and welcome to Jim's Table Topics, August 2019, the ubiquitous narrative. Yes, the ubiquitous narrative. Unlike the decad bag, it's right there. You can see it's the decad bag. You almost know where it is, at least it's at the beach, it's on the balcony, on the boat, in the back alleys, and more back alleys. But uh, at any rate, this show is going to talk about the narrative and how ubiquitous it is, like a telephone pole. So without any further ado, let's go to Jim's Table Topics, August 2019, The Ubiquitous Narrative. Well, good evening and welcome to the uh, Jim's Table Topics. Okay, this is the August uh, 2019 edition. It's, uh, I believe it's actually August 18th, 2019, and here we are. But at any rate, uh, I, I know last month, July, I've had way too many videos and too less of me and I was uh, Russian, Russian, and Russian. So this week, I'm going to hopefully slow the pace down a little. i got to try to remind myself to slow it down. So I've only got a couple of, you know, probably like maybe 20 minutes of video this time. So that gives me at least 40 minutes to, to uh, inform you of what's going on from my point of view. But at any rate, last week, again, I mean last month, I, I did kind of went off the reservation with my uh, good news that Jesus loves us and died for our sins and he uh, wants us to uh, get to know him. The good news, and uh, as opposed to the fake news and the bad news of all the uh, lies, deception, and uh, just, uh, just the rotten information out there, okay? So, uh, I'm going to focus a little more time on the, uh, the good news this time and uh, we'll uh, get a few good uh, doses of good news this time okay so but this month's show will kind of entitle uh, I don't know what we're gonna call it this month but basically I've got the Antifa bias we have an Antifa bias I mean I don't know if you know anything about the uh, the Dayton Ohio shooter but he, he was from Antifa and then we have the uh, El Paso, Texas shooter, who uh, again was a rabid environmentalist, and uh, he posted a manifesto pretty much saying that uh, it had nothing to do with uh, Donald Trump, but more that he was trying to save the planet by getting rid of the uh, the too many there's too many people that live bad lives and they're too much consumerism. So, and his, you know. He, he was driven on probably by uh, AOC and her, uh, the world's going to end in 12 years because of uh, climate and environmental changes. <laughs> so that's why he did it. Uh, but did the media tell you that? No, nah, no. So we're talking about bias, Antifa bias, environmental bias, and then we'll go into some Trump bias. Okay, and of course you know that the Antifa bias and the environmental biases, they're biased to the good side. They can do no wrong, they're great, they're the beautiful people, it's lovely. And then the Trump bias and the conservative bias is the evil, the, the Satan incarnate, they're the worst people on the planet. So that's what we're talking about, bias, bias, and more bias, lies, lies, and more lies. Fake news, fake news, and fake news. Thank God, and I really mean God above, thank God for the good news. That Jesus came and he gave us the Bible and a whole lot of good stuff to try to live our lives by without listening to this buffoonery. Literal buffoonery. So, that's that's going to be today's show. I'm going to try to stick to it, but you know, I, I do go off the reservation, don't I? <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's just so many things going on and the, and the media does tell us that they can't report on everything, but really when everything they miss is critical key information that would shed some highlights on possible Trump and conservative pro uh, policies and programs in the economy that's really working and doing good. That can't be said, can't be said, can't be said. In fact, if you say anything good about Trump, they will uh, bully you like they bully the conservatives. In fact, that's what's going on there now. We'll get into that. It's uh, it's it's pretty sad. I, I actually just got an email uh, the other day that said that Antifa is going to start uh, going to the their, you know how they have their little protests, but now they're going to go dressed with MAGA hats and MAGA things, and of course they'll still cover their faces, 
maybe they'll use red to be to, so so because that's the Trump color, the red, uh, you know, uh, uh, make America great again hat and the red, 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 and and, and they're gonna go and wreak havoc like they always do, but it's not a big deal when Antifa does it. But if the Antifa people are dressed up like Trump supporters with MAGA hats and Trump t-shirts on, you think they'll pro play it and, and tell you what a big lie it is? Nah, nah. They'll tell, they'll tell you, look at these Trump people. They've gone off the wall now. <laughs> and it's, it's just sad that uh, people have been fooled by the media and it's, well, we, well, we'll get into that. We've, we've got to, that's the show. So now we're going to get into the good news first. We're going to do the good news. And we'll save the bad news, the fake news, for the end. Okay. So I know that a couple of months ago I read the, uh, the Apostles' Creed. And I want to read it again. I got, I, I got it written right here. And, I, and also, because that's what Christians, as Christians, believe. And then I wanted to also talk about uh, the, the Nicene Creed, which is a little, it's a similar to the Apostles' Creed. It's a basically a basic statement of faith of what Christians believe, but a little more detail. So I'm just going to, you know, without further ado, I'm just going to read it. I'm sure that if, uh, if you've been to church, a uh, Christian church, a uh, Catholic church, Christian church, uh, well, but believe in Jesus, you're a Christian, whether you're a Catholic, Protestant, whatever. But uh, we, we all believe in the same God. Alright, so here we go. You may have heard this in some uh, various form. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended, he descended into Hades, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So that is the Apostles' Creed. And then... This one, I also have the Nicene Creed written here, and this is just, it's all the same as Apostles' Creed, it just has a little more detail in there, so I'm just going to read that as well. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light. True God of true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us, men, and our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and he was made man, and crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So those are some of the basic tenet beliefs of Christianity. And, uh, you know, they're supposed to, you know, there's little sayings there that say, they'll know that we're Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. So, are Christians loving Again, we we kind of go off the reservation sometimes, we and we sin. We all do, and uh, it's just that we need to to admit where we went wrong, ask forgiveness from God, and whoever we've um, grieved in our sin, and move on in forgiveness. 
So, uh, I like to think that Jesus and his love for us brings unity, whereas Satan brings division and hostility. Uh, I do have uh, some biblical passages here I'd like to, to read. This is just uh, one from uh, Ephesians chapter 4. I'll just read it from the beginning. Uh, As a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you all to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and there is one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So, God has given us the capacity to love and be loved, and we need to do that. And it's, uh, sometimes it's a little difficult, but uh, you know, I mean, as Christians, we are called to love. Uh, the Bible tells us that anybody can love someone who loves you back. That's every, as God and Jesus said in the Bible, and any pagan and you know heathen will do that, love someone who loves them. But we, as Christians, we are to love those who hate us and revile us, and you know, so. And we have to, you know, love our enemies. That's basically what it is. So it's very difficult, but it, we have to do that and uh, and um, try. I can't wait till tomorrow. I get better every day. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's another passage here. This is in one John chapter five. I'll just start from the beginning of it and just read uh, several verses here. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ and is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is the love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes of the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood, and that in the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in his Son, in the Son of God, has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believe the testimony of God he has given about his Son. And this is the testimony of God, has given us eternal life, and this life, and in his Son. He who has the Son has life, he who does not have the Son does not have life. And I think that we can see that's a pretty testament, that uh, people who don't believe in Jesus, believe in God, uh, are the ones that are wreaking the most havoc on the planet. And there are some people that, uh, in the name of God, have created and done a lot of hellacious things themselves. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we always look at, if you want to look at what a, a religion is and what it's all about, you look at the, the founder of the religion, not the followers who may have uh, gone off the reservation. Pure Christianity, pure love, and Jesus Christ. The only way to go. It's the only way to go. That's the good news. Jesus came, he died for our sins, and he loves us, and he wants us to get to know him. He gave us the Bible for that very reason. So, 
I appreciate your time and patience with my readings and our good news. So I want to go on now, so we'll, we'll go into the rest of the uh, Jim's table topics. We'll put our good news right over here and we'll talk about some of the uh, fake news. Okay, so to kick off the fake news, we're going to go to tape number one. Jesse, Jesse uh, Waters, uh, has some things to say about uh, our very topics tonight of Antifa, environmentalism, and the shooters in Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso. So without further ado, to the tape. Welcome to Waters World, I'm Jesse Waters. The truth about El Paso and Dayton, that is the subject of tonight's Waters Words. The El Paso shooter has zero to do with Donald Trump. He says so in his manifesto. Um, have it right here, I'm just paraphrasing it. He says he killed to stop Hispanics from invading Texas, and goes on to say that he arrived at his immigration ideology long before Trump came onto the scene, and that Trump's rhetoric did not inspire him. He says it right here, in the manifesto. But the left straight up lies to you. We have a president of the United States who is particularly responsible. He is in large part to blame for what has taken place. The only modern Western democracy that I can think of that said anything close to this is the Third Reich. Well, there's no question that white nationalism is condoned at the highest levels of our government. Clear language and in code, this president has fanned the flames of white supremacy in this nation. We have a president who encourages and emboldens it. He's been emboldening white supremacists his entire presidency. He is inciting hatred, inciting violence, inciting racism. He thinks that this is, in fact, a white nation. He's worried about the demographic shifts. He's appealing to uh, the darker sides of the country uh, in order to put forward this view that this country must be and must remain a white nation. Now, there's no evidence to support these reckless lies. It is true the shooter was a white supremacist. He was a domestic terrorist. And white supremacist violence is now blaring on the FBI's radar. Racial hatred must be stopped. The shooter was also a radical environmental extremist who was motivated to murder human beings in order to save the planet. The media also hid that from you. Again, to paraphrase his manifesto, he says our consumer lifestyle is destroying the planet, the plastics, the pollution, the drilling. And since people won't change their lifestyle, he wanted to reduce the number of people by shooting them dead so we can save resources and achieve sustainability. Now, to use the left's logic, the shooter was inspired by AOC's doomsday climate change rhetoric. But Waters World isn't going to blame AOC for some evil, mentally ill maniac. That's irresponsible. That's what the left is doing, though, to Donald Trump. So let's turn to the Dayton shooter now. He had Trump derangement syndrome. His social media footprint supported the squad, Liz Warren, socialism, Satan. He trafficked in violent Trump assassination screeds, anti-ICE rhetoric, and praised the ICE facility bomber. He was involved with Antifa online and according to the Dayton Daily News, showed up at an Antifa protest with a bandana covering his face, armed with a gun. Yet, the media is lumping the Dayton shooter in with the El Paso shooter and blaming Donald Trump for both, even after the facts show no connection. Now, the media doesn't report the news, they report the narrative. And this is what the narrative is now. Conservative rhetoric incites violence, but liberal rhetoric does not. The truth is, only the shooters are responsible for their wicked actions. Look at this man's poor face. He was allegedly beaten up in the streets of New York City, city simply for wearing a MAGA hat. Remember the anti-Semite shot up a synagogue in Pittsburgh? Congressman Steve Scalise was shot by a Bernie bro. An ICE facility was firebombed. Now, did you hear the media blaming Maxine Waters, Omar, Bernie, or AOC for these crimes? Or their crew's violent rhetoric? 
If we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Of course I want to punch him in the face. Right. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? I will go and take Trump out tonight. And we all remember the Kathy Griffin thing. None of that puts a target on anyone's back. So everything now the left accuses Trump of doing, they're doing themselves. Congressman Joaquin Castro tweeted out a list of Trump donors in San Antonio, Texas, and their businesses, accusing them of fueling a hate campaign. So let me get this straight. Trump counterpunches political opponents in the arena of ideas, and the media says he's putting them in danger. But Castro literally puts a target on civic-minded civilians immediately after a mass shooting, and the media says, oh, hum. So they're now calling all Trump supporters Nazis, doxing them, and then saying this. So to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. The left's new line of attack against their fellow American citizens is disarm Nazi or else. Their method is simple. Call Trump a racist terrorist, make millions of Trump supporters accessories to hate crimes, tar them, feather them, and then boycott their businesses. Are the media and the Democratic Party trying to start civil unrest? They're dividing America more now than Trump ever has. Look at this Chiron on MSNBC. Trump-inspired terrorism. Wow. Now, after the anti-police rhetoric from the Obama White House, from Black Lives Matter, and from the media a few years ago, a black nationalist assassinated many Dallas police officers. Did CNN blame Obama? No. The left will blame Trump and conservatives for everything that goes wrong in the world. Mass shootings, climate change like floods and heat waves they say are related, recessions, income inequality, racism, sexism, gun violence, Russian interference. Remember they framed Trump for that. Even bullying Trump gets blamed. All roads lead back to Donald Trump and conservatives. It's just politics. And the strategy is this. The left wants to criminalize speech, so Trump and his supporters can't talk about the border in blunt terms. They can't tell the truth about illegal immigration. The left is trying to scare you out of securing the border by saying any truthful discussion of it makes you a racist and is going to lead to violence. This all comes down to hate and power. The left uses the former to achieve the latter. Democrats actually fundraised off the mass shooting before the bodies were even buried. Hopefully, this fever will fade, and politicians can do something that makes us safer from crazies pointing guns at us instead of pointing fingers at each other. Here with reaction. Stuart Varney, the host of Varney and Company on Fox Business. All right, so what's your reaction to all this? I fit to be tied. It is absolutely outrageous to connect the president to the shootings last weekend when there is no connection at all. It is outrageous to see the left playing this for purely political purposes. As you said in your monologue there, I think it's the result of the utter contempt that the left has for our president. It borders on abject hatred. That's the way they feel about this guy. Now, can, can I just come sure. at this from a slightly different perspective? Yeah. Because I was born and raised in England. Yeah. I'd never seen a handgun until I came to the United States of America. The guns are banned in Britain after the shooting in Dunblane many years ago. So here I come to America, never seen a handgun, walk into a gun store, they're all over the place, and I have an extreme admiration for America because we are the only country in the world which allows the arming of the citizens just in case that government gets too uppity. We are unique and I want to see that kept in place. And there is no connection between President Trump and those shootings, and it's being exploited politically by the left, and I object. It's horrible, and the fact that they're now inciting violence against Trump supporters merely for making a donation, merely casting a vote. Right. I mean, there was, there was Trump counties that years ago voted for Barack Obama. I mean, how is Trump a white nationalist if his support from African Americans and Hispanic Americans 
is growing. It doesn't make any sense at all. And then to cherry pick the manifesto yeah. to divide the country and to help and protect Democrats is so deceitful and dishonest, I'm fit to be tied too. Look, in, in some respects, this is a personal insult. In my family, my family, very American family, there are three races, Caucasian, Asian, African. There are two religions, Christianity, Judaism. There are seven ethnic nationalities. We are very American. Am I a racist? Am I a bigot for the family like that? Because I support President Trump and support his growth agenda? That is a, that's a personal insult. It reminds me of Hillary Clinton and the deplorable speech. Yeah. You're a rotten bunch of deplorables. No, this is it, me. This is deplorables on steroids. Because now it's just they're not just deplorables. They need to be harassed. They need to be exposed where they work, where they live. Sunlight, the best, the best disinfectant you can get. Show them to us. Show them what these people are doing. Showing the hatred. Let's see it. And that we will we'll disinfect. And you know what? And then once they've incited violence, they say, you know what? We're going to do mandatory gun confiscation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Could you imagine that? Someone comes to your house after seeing something someone tweets on the internet and they start raging outside while your wife and your kids are inside right. and you've had to give your rifle back? Right. I do think that public opinion shifted over those weekend shootings and I think it shifted in favor of maybe we're ready for red flag laws. Right. Issuing some, take guns away from those who pose an imminent danger. There's a huge problem with that. I agree. So, since when are you going to seize guns on mere suspicion? That is a very dangerous thing to do, but just maybe the public is in a mood to do it. Yeah, well. I regret it. Hopefully we can all come together and solve the problem and make everybody safer and do something that's going to protect us. Would that be nice, Jesse? Attention. And how unlikely that is. Yeah, this, it never happens, does it, sir? It doesn't. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Nice all to right. be with you. Here with more, Fox News contributor Dan Bongino and the host of the Michael Knowles show, Michael Knowles. All right. Welcome back. So th there you have it. So you saw Jesse, you saw the reports, and I, I don't know how many, how many more times, Mr. Speaker, how many times do we have to listen to the, you saw them, 5, 10, 15, 20 different uh, talking heads from CNN and MSNBC and you name it, and they say the exact same things, they spew the exact same fake news, their lies. And and they and they keep they just say it over and over and over again, over and over and over again. It's the narrative, it's the narrative, it's the narrative. I, I know I keep beating the same drum, but that's that that's all I just want to highlight this stuff for you. You believe what you want to believe, because you know, you you know, your life is gonna be a sum total of what you believe, okay? And uh, they've written songs about that, you know, the Doobie brothers, you know what a fool believes. And uh, yeah, there's two ways to fool people. Well, there's two ways to fool yourself. Take your pick. Either believe a lie or refuse to accept the truth and believe the truth. Okay? So, you got a choice. You can believe the fake news over here. Not that Trump's any great bargain, mind you. He is no great bargain. But God uses broken people to do the work. Okay? If you... I mean, I just went through a whole Bible study from Genesis to Revelation, and I went through all the leaders of the, uh, the Jewish people, the chosen people in the Old Testament, right into Christianity and the New Testament, into, uh, and every, everyone, every biblical character is flawed. They all sinned. They all made big mistakes, but God still used them to do a few good things, okay? Uh, so, um, like I said, Trump is no bargain, but what he's doing with appointing judges that really understand the Constitution, I mean, this is the only thing that's saving us from, from total chaos and anarchy is our Constitution. But the fake news people, as evidence, just, did you know that the Dayton, Ohio shooter was a, a CAD-carrying member of Antifa? Did the media tell you that? No, they lied right to your face. Did you know that the El Paso shooter denied that Trump had anything to do with it in his manifesto? Written, you saw it. 
but yet they continue to say the same lie over and over again. You got some people telling you, and then over here, and that's why it's so damning this this whole fake news setup. It's it it it. it you know, we all need to wake up and smell the tyranny here, folks. The fake news is not doing us any favors. They're leading us down the wrong path to socialism. And socialism is, you know, it's like, you know, you can't have a little socialism. There's not a special socialism for <laughs> the United States. Socialism is socialism. You can vote yourself into socialism. Venezuela was a democratic socialist country. They, they, they were like one of the sixth, fifth, fourth, you know, wealthiest growing countries in, in the world. You know, in 2010, 5, 10, but in 2012, all of a sudden, they got, they voted themselves in socialist people. This guy Maverick, whatever his name is, but I can't remember his name. But at any rate, they voted him in. Now he won't leave. And now he's shooting the same people who voted him in because that's what socialists do. Socialism just turns into communism. And the only difference between a socialist and a communist is that a communist is a socialist in a hurry. And in the socialist, they go, please, please do it. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna send in Tifa and we're gonna call you bad names. We're gonna call you a racist and a hater and a uh, whatever it is they call the, the Trump people now, deplorable, evil, bad people. That's what a socialist does. A communist says, hey, I'm in charge. Do it my way or you're dead. That's because that's what they're doing. That's how it works. Okay, and if you, you know, so I'm saying, how can people vote for socialism? It's because they don't understand the difference between we live in a republic, a constitutional republic, okay, and a democracy. A democracy has been known to, you know, from hundreds of years ago, you can find quotes that the democracy is the worst form of government because a democracy turns into socialism, okay? Because once people figure out they can vote for themselves money and gifts from the treasury, they will vote for the person who promises them the most stuff, okay? That's how it works. So if you vote for some socialist like Bernie or you know Kamala or any of those, you know, we're going to give you this and we're going to give you that. Yeah, well, you know what? That's socialism. You vote for that. And then the country is just going to fall apart by loose fiscal policies because someone's got to pay for all that free stuff. And it's the workers. And there ain't going to be many workers because once, once the socialists take over, everything that Trump did with undoing NAFTA, GATT, and all those bad deals that it, literally Congress sold this country to the, to the globalists, okay? And they were just waiting to, to collect their... And now that Trump's in there, that's why they hate him so much is because he stopped the train of turning America into a socialist country and, and we, so we could become part of the global, um, you know, fodder, like the U European Union. But Brexit and a lot of other people are starting to wake up to this whole uh, globalization scam. But needless to say, there are true believers and they just think that globalism and socialism is the best thing in the world. But they, they're, So they're either, what are they? They're either willing accomplices because they want to be in charge of him, you know, or they're, they're just, you know, unwitting accomplices thinking that is great, but they really don't know what they're supporting. Okay, so take your pick, which one are you? <clears throat> and, uh, but again, socialism flies in the face. It's totally antithetical to the uh, Constitution and the way of our lives. Okay, and again, let's get into globalism, uh, uh, environmentalism. Okay, so we beat the Antifa and the socialist agenda because that's what they want. Antifa basically acts like the KGB. Okay, so that's what they're doing. And then when full socialism comes in, then Antifa will come. You don't go with the socialists, they'll, they'll club you, they'll beat you to death. <laughs> that's what they'll do. That's what they're doing in Venezuela now. Okay. So, now let's talk about the environmental people. I mean, it's already been proven and told that, yeah, everything that's in this Green Deal is all the stuff that they can tax and get money out of people to do all these things that they want to do. But, the shooter from El Paso believed all that stuff and believed that overpopulation and all these useless 
over consumers and consumerism was bad for the planet and we're all going to die in 12 years. So he figured that he would take care of some of the, you know, he wanted to start cleaning up the planet. So that's why he shot all the people at Walmart. Okay, so it wasn't a white supremacist. It was a, it was a rabid environmental person. Okay, did the media tell you that? Uh, no. They did. In fact, you saw it from the Jesse Waters clips. They just lied to your face, and you can, you know. <laughs> Sorry, it's just sad. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know how else to explain it. But that's where we are. Okay. And now they're talking about uh, red flag laws. Yeah, we should have red flag laws for the congressmen and senators if they, if they start talking about turning America into a socialist country or start talking about violating the Constitution, which the Constitution is a very simple thing to understand. It's a box that limits what the federal government can do. And they violate it time and time again. They should all be thrown out of office. We should just, you know, vote for new people. Get new fresh blood in there because these guys are corrupt. They are the deep state, and, and they're just up there. It's like a popularity contest. And if I get in there, I'm going to be set for life. And that's all it's all about. Oh, okay. All right, I think I've uh, beat that enough. So we're going to go into uh, our next clip, which is Trump came to New Hampshire. Okay? So, again, it's just uh, sad. It's sad that uh, the way things are going, but it's good to see that we have a lot of uh, enthusiasm to uh, get Trump reelected. And uh, I mean, there was always the uh, never Trumpers and the no Trumpers when you know during election 2016. But now that uh, Trump's been in office, we can see that he's doing good for the conservative movement, and we're, we're making some traction with the economy and policies, and uh, hopefully we can get some uh, critical mass here to, to uh, outvote the, uh, the socialists. But until then, let's just take a quick look at some pictures and a few comments about Trump in New Hampshire. Live free or die. Okay, so uh, yeah, President Trump was in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire uh, Thursday night, August 15th, so Here's just a few pictures, uh, 10 pictures that uh, I picked off, uh, came with one of the emails someone sent me. So I don't even know who this guy is, but there's the whole arena behind him. And uh, just m more shots from uh, the crowd. Lots of people, lots of Trump signs, because it's, it's all Trump all day at the Trump rally. <laughs> and yeah, there's Trump with the uh, infamous background of all the uh, supporters. And this is Caroline, uh, I forget her cause, uh, I forget her last name, but she's a select woman down in Stoneham. So this is kind of a bunch of people here from Massachusetts. Uh, and again, another good shot. I mean, there's, I think the place hold, held uh, 12,000 people, 11,000, 12,000 people, and there was another two or 3,000 outside. Apparently there were people lined up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Some people slept overnight. And by noontime, you couldn't even, the, the, the traffic was 10 miles long getting into uh, Manchester. You just couldn't, as they say, you can't get there from here. You just couldn't do it. The crowd was uh, huge, and they had a big jumbotron out there for the people who couldn't make it in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> Liberalism, let's find a cure. <laughs> okay, and then this t-shirt says, four more years, Trump. There you go. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, people outside waiting to get in, trying to get in, the line to get in. And a few more people in line outside. Oh, they're waiting to get in. I've been to a meeting. I've seen this woman several times before. I know she's from somewhere. The Cape, I think. And, uh, yeah, just another 
woman in the crowd and uh, another several women in the crowd a pink trump shirt not red okay and, and some pink hair to match okay that's uh, so those are the, the 11 pitches uh, it came in on an email okay so yeah this is the email that it came in on Boston Broadside uh, you know these newspapers are uh, the Boston Broadside they're in several locations in Danvers, Post Office, Brothers, McKinnon's, and the, at the bus stop by the, uh, the atrium. Yeah, so these are the pictures we just looked at. You know, New Hampshire gave, rally goers gave a huge, huge, huge warm welcome to President Trump. Uh, New Hampshire rally goers gave a huge, huge, yep, and it just goes on. Yeah. Bonus will also include exclusive interviews and photos with the president. So there's more to come. Uh, apparently, that guy couldn't. His name was Tim Murtag. He's one of the other communications directors for President Trump. So, yeah. So the Boston Broadside. If you go to www.bostonbroadside.com, you can see these pictures and uh, the reports, and there'll be videos posted up there eventually. So uh, that'd be a good take if you can do that. Alrighty. Okay, and here's just one last uh, video I picked off the web. The crowd is huge and uh, as you can see extremely enthusiastic and uh, I don't think the press could say anything good about this at all. No way, no how, can't do it, won't say it and they'll just pick the worst of everything he said and uh, take it out of context just to make him look bad and uh, that's just the way the fake news does it and he, he kind of really told it to him if you watch the uh, his 90 minute speech, he really uh, calls the press out because they are, they're liars, it's not even funny anymore, it's not even fake, it's just they just blatantly lie, as uh, we'll see with the Waters report coming up. So. Okay, there you have it, the crowd is huge, enthusiastic, uh, they love them, and uh, the fake news will not report this, they don't report this, and uh, oh by the way, they don't report this. <laughs> Four more years, baby. Okay, welcome back. So, that's uh, what happened up in New Hampshire. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I thought that t-shirt was kind of funny. Uh, what did it say? Liberalism, let's find a cure. <laughs> Oh, well. So, at any rate, as you can see, there's a lot of enthusiasm, there's a lot of hype going on and, and, the, um, and traction getting on in the Trump uh, re-election campaign. Unfortunately, with the arrival of Antifa and all sorts of other, you know, the media, you, you've seen the reports, you've seen them go over and over again. They were you know, threatening Mitch McConnell, oh, he only fell down and broke his arm, he should have broke his neck, we got we got to stop all these conservatives, you see him out at having, a, you see him in a restaurant, shame him to get out of there, don't let him, and then they're telling kids on college campuses not to join any conservative groups or Republican groups because it won't be bode, bode well for them because they, you know, so they're just trying to silence the whole conservative message. People, I talk to people all the time. Yeah, I do. I do. I talk to a lot of people. And people are afraid to put Trump bumper stickers on their car. Because, well, they, you know, they might say, they might, they might ruin my car, they might do this, they might do that. And they're, they're literally terrified because 
the beautiful people are bullying the conservatives. And that's why Trump is such a rabid tweeter. Because, because in case you didn't know it, I mean, there's so many movements going on, like the hashtag walk away. Those are Democrats that have had it with the, uh, the, the, uh, so, the socialists and the rabid extreme leftism of the Democratic Party has been hijacked by the socialists. They, they have a whole hashtag walk away. Millions of people that used to be Democrats just recently. Did the media tell you about that? No, they hide all this stuff from you. They, they obfuscate. I'll use big words. Obfuscate means to hide, not to show. Do not let this out. They obfuscate the truth and certain issues and facts because they don't want you to know it. Because if you know that, then you're going to go against their narrative. And their narrative is all they care about. Their narrative is what we call ubiquitous. Ubiquitous is a word that kind of basically means it's all over the place and you know it's so prevalent you don't even pay it like a telephone pole. No matter where you go, you see them. They're all over the place. So they're ubiquitous. They, you don't even notice them because they're, they're just there and you don't even pay attention. Well, that's what the narrative is. The narrative is ubiquitous because it's on... All the mainstream fake news outlets, it's on, it's built into Hollywood, it's built into all the movies, it's built into all the TV series. I, I watched some of these TV series, I can't watch network TV, it just drives my mind crazy, but I watched some just, you know, my mother said, what are you watching that stuff for? I said, I, you gotta know what the culture is listening to, and so you listen, they throw all this stuff in all these stupid shows that the kids are watching, and so, yeah, I was a kid. I used to watch stupid shows myself. And it's, uh, yeah, we want. But when you throw in all this political hate of Trump, hate of Trump policies, hate of conservatives, hate of Christianity, hate of God, hate, 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 and you make Christians and conservatives and everyone else, and even men, to look like morons and bozos, and that's the narrative. That is the narrative. And that's what is ubiquitous. That's what the cult, and that's why the millennials and the Gen Xs, you know, they've been brainwashed into this socialism is good and, and, and capitalism and, 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 and conservatism is bad. But no, you know, everyone hates Donald Trump, but everybody wants to be him. Everyone's building condos and casinos and uh, they just want to make money, 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 money. Because, you know, I mean, yeah, we all want to you know, live comfortably. We all want to, you know, work. You know, get a decent job and, and, and make some money. And, and, and some people do it in real estate. Some people uh, are in engineering or whatever. Blue collar workers, white collar workers, whatever. You know, we all have our gifts and talents from God that we use to make money and uh, you know, in support of our family, hobbies, and uh, and putting out the word, the good news for God, the good news for God. Let's not forget about God. So, at any rate. Uh, which rate are we on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no matter how I slice it, I still run out of time. I, I think I lost track of what the heck I'm doing. Okay. But, again, Trump was here, and they won't give him one ounce of credit for anything. That's why he has to toot his own horn. <laughs> and the press be moans him for that. But, yeah, again, it's, what, what are you going to do? We can't, we can't undo what we're, what we're doing here. So... Uh, I'm just urging you, you know, in fact, I think it'd be funny if, you know, of course, I mean, what, how many people are out there watching? Five, if that. But I'd like to get some socialists and liberals to just go somewhere and pretend that they're a Trump supporter or a conservative and hold, you know, and hold a sign for Trump or some conservative and see what their fellow beautiful people tell them because I... I've been told a lot of stuff, I think. <laughs> but I don't really care. I just, I just nod my head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great day. It's a great day that you're free to talk about all this dribble. But it's all about what's the fruit of your labor. What, what's really happening? So if the Trump economy is only going this way because he has put the feet to the fire of all these globalists 
China, the uh, NAFTA GATT, the Pacific Rim, and all these other the top, whatever the heck that was, tap top, all these bad agreements that just said, yeah, I'll take all American jobs off seas, no, nothing for America. And so he stopped that. And that's why they're all screaming and crying, and the, the media won't give them the time of day or any credit for it. But you elect a socialist. That's all gone. If you think you have a 401ks and your and your job is saving energy, uh, it'll be done. Okay, we're gonna go for one more little clip here. I don't even remember what it is. Well, we're gonna shift gears now. It's all about the fake news. They can't tell the truth if their life depends on it. We're gonna go. I just uh, had a little report of which you probably never heard that there was a rally on the uh, Boston State House back in August. Um, I forget what date, but let's go to the tape and you'll see. Okay. Okay, and here's just one more uh, Boston Broadside article, which is in the current paper this week. You know, there was a huge rally there on the uh, at the State House. Thousands of people were there, thousands, and uh, Channel 7 News, they gave five words, two minutes and 12 seconds, and it was, uh, you know, if you read this whole article, basically it just kind of tells you that uh, they did most of that taping after everyone left, so you could see that there, so they could show you that there wasn't that many people there, but there was, because they just, you know, and uh, it's, it's just terrible, terrible, terrible. So you can go to the Boston Broadside and read all about it. While no coverage was seen on Channel 4, 5, 7, 25, other media channels, Channel 7 broadcasts constitute a gross misrepresentation of the rally. The station interjected closely cropped video of the event in their on, online and uh, on live air and online coverage. Then they followed up with a canned footage in studio feed, old footage, and then filled their coverage with video that was mostly shot more than 18 minutes after the rally was over including brief interviews with a few attendees and footage that showed a dispersed crowd. We witnessed their filming and their methods firsthand at the event. So there you have it. That's how they make the fake news. Right there, loud and clear. It is pathetic. And uh, that's it. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so, yep, I think I've pretty much uh, overspent my time. I, I'm lucky if I got five minutes left if I if I can remember how to count under pressure. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I've got the Boston Broadside right here, and that's you know I was reading that whole report. It's all in the Boston Broadside. These are scattered in Davis at, in front of the town, uh, the post office over at the Brothers, and uh, over at the uh, there's a Boston Broadside box at the. Uh, Atrium is the mail, uh, what do you call it there, the bus stop there at the atrium, and then uh, inside uh, McKinnon's they, they go. So meanwhile back at the ranch, as you can see, the media just cannot help themselves. Even the local yokels, forget about the national media, the local media is it's just as bad because they're all, it's all part of the narrative. If you're not in the narrative, you're not in the, you're not on the team. You either with the narrative, or you pretend to be with the narrative, witting or unwitting, or you're off the team. So that's how it works. I mean, how many people? I mean, look at what you know, like Jeffrey Epstein. Jeff Epstein. They just broke his neck. You know. Uh, uh, you know. Apparently, Bill Clinton has been on the. If you don't know what the Lolita Express is, then again. That's because the narrative doesn't tell you, <laughs> the fake news doesn't tell you anything. The Lolita Express is, is uh, Jeffrey Epstein's private plane called Lolita, so hence the Lolita Express goes from wherever he is to his little private island in St. the Virgin Islands, there, St. James, uh, uh, St. John's Island number two. He owned a whole island, it was just like, oh, and that's where all the, uh, yeah, that's where it all happened. He wasn't just a pimp bringing people in for us, yeah, which we'll never know because uh, they killed him. Arkansas. I, suicide or Arkansas? <laughs> That's what they call it. The body count is horrendous for people who uh, have a uh, 
knowledge about the deep state, and if they think you might have a loose lip, you're a goner. Good night, Jeffrey. Sleeping with the fishies. And people were saying, yeah, will his, uh, all his disk drives, which they should have got three or four weeks ago, they're just going down there now to get them. They're probably all, uh, what do they call it, bit washed, like uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, disk drives. Again, and if the bit dry, or the bit washer, <laughs> they think he's going to talk, he'll be dead too. In fact, Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, it was a judge that was reviewing his case three or four months ago, five months. Yeah, well, gee, they found him dead. Well, he just died. Oh, yeah, oh, well. It happens, I guess. <laughs> so, see, it's not as a, you know, again, the, the fake news, they not only lie to you as an extra bonus, they don't tell you half the stuff you should know. Okay? And if I'm the only one who's telling you that, no, I'm not. I'm not, the, I'm not a lone voice crying in the wolf. I'm just the local voice. You saw Jesse Waters and all the people that he's brought on and the, you know, there are a few, but they're trying to silence us, they're trying to bully us. You know, we, what, we can't put Trump bumper stickers on our cars anymore because of uh, fear that someone's going to, you know, take us out, and that's what people are afraid of. I mean, it's, it's just sad. It's, it's sad that we've come to that. Is that, is, is, is that freedom of speech? No, that's bullying. And you've seen it I, on Jesse's little clip there, you know. Everyone calling for violence from uh, Robert De Niro, whatever the heck his name is, and uh, all of them. Yeah, that's that's what we call bullying. Okay, I've lost. I I'm done. I I got to end it right here, folks. It was a quick hour. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will have to uh, continue on in September because uh, election 2020. A lot of lies to undo. A lot of obfuscation to. Shine the light on. We gotta shine that light on the stuff that the media's trying to hide. Yeah, that's what conspiracies can't stand is light. They don't want people to expose what they're doing. Well, that's what, what that's what I'm doing. I'm telling you what they're doing. You can believe me or believe them, but you know what? <laughs> As Bob Dylan said, we all gotta serve somebody. God loves you. The good news is God loves you. He died for you. He died for all of us, and he wants us to get to know him. So let's do that. Find a church, talk to someone, and uh, find out about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, good night, and we'll see you next month. Well, okay, well, thanks for watching again. Uh, Jim's Table Topics, August 2019, the ubiquitous narrative. Yes, how the fake news has overtaken America. The generations, the... Uh, all the institutions, but uh, have no fear. Jesus brought the good news near. Okay, so let's focus on the good news and not the fake news. So, again, thanks again for watching. We'll try again next month. But for now, this is Jim Table Topics, August 2019, the ubiquitous narrative.